those challenging times are going to come. Your people are going to be your recovery through those times. So actually helping people themselves, your employees, the people that you work with, your collaborators, starting to look at how your decisions affect all these different areas, even looking out to society, the environment, your shareholders and your clients and customers. How do your decisions affect all these stakeholders at the end of the day? Because that's what and where your resiliency is going to come. I notice you're also doing so many things. So not only have you learned so many things that you impart to others, but you're also, you yourself are doing radio presenting. You have your freelance consulting gig. So yeah, I did check your LinkedIn on top of your company, Essentialize. Now, what is your secret to being able to do all of these things? And I assume that you are doing it at a certain level of success that you are happy about. We're wondering, Time and energy is one of the things that obviously a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with to manage and to optimize. How do you do it? What I kind of like to say, and this is something that gets rolled out to a lot of the clients is stop trying to manage time. Can't manage time. Time is time. Schedule your time. Be mindful. Make sure you take breaks because that's how you disconnect and you're able to reconnect and become more powerful. Honor those old trading rhythms, but stop trying to manage time. What you need to manage is your energy and your attention. Because when you ask me that question, how do you manage to do a number of different things and still have time for your family, still have time to look after your health? I manage my energy very, very, you know, very, very closely. I have boundaries. Don't let other people drain it to a point where I'm not comfortable with. And I really, again, because I learn to listen to my body, I know when it's time. And I know how to manage that. I'm like a phone battery. And I know when to drop into low power mode. And I know when to really, you know, push that, put that app that really pushes the productivity to the max. And by doing that, what it also allows me to do is control my attention. So manage my attention. When I'm working, I'm on that task. No distractions, everything else away. And that takes practice as well. Because we're so used to notification pinging here, email here, reply here, you know, colleague here. Well, no, if you're going to do deep, productive work, you're going to make a difference. You need to decide that your attention is here right now. Concentration, your focus is on this thing. If we constantly switch in tasks, that attention residue means you don't get anything done. Not anything well. We can't multitask. And we certainly can't multifocus. And starting to look and realize that if you can manage your attention to do some time blocks of work, some serious work where you take your significant tasks for the day and you spend 60 to 90 minutes just fully focused on that, everything else away, start to think, where do you do your best work in the day? Because for some people, it's earlier. For some people, it's really early. For some people, it's a bit later. But try and find that sweet spot where you feel you get into flow with that work. That is your time. Usually it's a four hour block because even people who work, you know, the nine to five, they're in an office for seven hours. They do three hours work and probably one hours quality work. And that's just the reality of human beings because you can't maintain high levels of performance for a long time. That is true. That is true. But yeah, that's life. You know that that is what we can expect. Like, at least we know that's what's happening. And so what we can measure, what we're aware of, we can improve. I noticed one of the things that you teach businesses on is about workplace resilience. Something that I know for a fact, a lot of businesses and companies need direly today, especially in this time where every, everything seems to fall apart. We don't know when this will all blow over. We have it really bad here in the Philippines. We're number one in terms of cases in Southeast Asia. People are not disciplined. The government is not the best, and that's putting it extremely kindly. We just don't, ha don't have the resources anymore. All of the hospitals are full. They are rejecting people who are dying. That is how bad it is 
here in the Philippines and and we're uncertain is it going to be done in two years one year we all hope it's going to be done by next year but odds are it's unlikely vaccines are made in at least four years three years would be amazing so resilience I wonder how you teach to businesses what you say what the most common questions are I mean resilience is that kind of very much a buzzword spoken about a lot but resilience means different things to different people. And a big part of resilience from an organizational perspective is embracing the uncertainty and discomfort of change because it's so easy to get into that status quo, things are as they are. And obviously, the more agile and dynamic you can be with your workforce, the more resilient you become because you're able to make those moves when things change. All of a sudden, you can bounce back from difficulties. And resilience is that ability to really find a way to make things happen when it's challenging. Because in business, it doesn't matter how much you think that things should be good all the time. Business is like the seasons. In summer, there's shed loads of profit, all the investment in the world, more budgets than you can even spend, and it feels amazing. But Around that corner is going to be winter for your business. And how you invest in the summer will ultimately impact how well you can be resilient in the winter. And you want to actually invest in, ultimately, a coat, a woolly hat, and some gloves and some boots for your business. Because those challenging times are going to come. Your people are going to be your recovery through those times. So actually helping people themselves, your employees, the people that you work with, your collaborators, starting to look at how your decisions affect all these different areas, even looking out to society, the environment, your shareholders and your clients and customers. How do your decisions affect all these stakeholders at the end of the day? Because that's what and where your resiliency is going to come. Because in the challenging times, your customers and your clients are going to stay with you through the challenge because you've been mindful of them all these years. They feel like you are their supplier, their service, their products. Looking at your employees, they know that you've invested in them, so they will continue to dig deeper and invest in you. They'll know this is the right train, because all of a sudden, you know, it's a bit rickety. This line, it's a bit shaky, but they will stay on that train because they have faith in the leadership to get them to the destination. And that resilience... It's really born from that challenge. Like my business started in the recession. This business is just moving into what's likely another technological recession. But I've actually found that my business has been more more meaningful in recession. When you're fighting against something a little bit bigger, you stand up a bit taller. You step into that challenge. And at the moment, I go into businesses and do workplace well-being a lot with Essentialize. And I see two sides See the businesses in the corner, holding the shield up, weathering the storm. It's understandable. Without you know, your bottom line being secure, without a level of cash flow and profit, then your business is not sustainable. So really, it doesn't matter in the bigger scheme of things what you invest it on. But it does. Because if you stand there and weather the storm, you might survive. But what have you got? after all your claws have been blown off by the wind. Because adversity doesn't discriminate. There's always winter coming. And it's now the people who are stood up and are saying, you know what? It's cold. But we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to actually keep investing in our people. And actually, our people are going to push us forward. When spring comes, they're going to be the ones digging the fields, planting the new bulbs that are going to grow into the amazing next summer. Start investing now in the winter and you will see fruit in the spring and bloom in the summer and that's what resilience is it's about really looking about how you're going to bounce back instead of worrying about where the threats are coming actually seeing now crisis as a challenge as a time to perform as a time to innovate as a time to think differently and be creative and if there's just one thing I want to leave listeners with, Sean, it's this principle. In the economic crisis, my business was born. But my business is a little business that I've just exited. 
and it allowed me to grow as a human being. But look on a bigger picture. What other businesses born out of the economic crisis in 2008? Take Uber and Airbnb, for example. They were ones who decided, let's use this crisis to disrupt the status quo, to do things differently. Let's go into an industry that's incredibly traditional and isn't moving. And let's shake it up so much that we actually almost take over the world and take over a whole industry and get people to do things different and spread that across the world to disrupt, to be curious to what we can do and to leverage technology and look and take best practice from other industry and use it to shake it up because that's what you can do. And there will be medium and small startups today who are going to be, in 10 years' time, the movers and shakers and future leaders of 2030. Start today. Maybe your idea, all those things together, your strengths, what you love, what you bring value, what you can monetize, maybe that is just the next thing that is going to take and make a massive difference in the world. So stop trying to make it perfect. Just start executing and evolve it, evolve it, and evolve it. Amazing. And that was supposed to be actually my last question for you, which is if there was one big advice you're going to give to entrepreneurs out there, what would, what would it be? And you have just given it. Shake it up. Make sure that you are innovating during this time because some of the biggest companies that were born in the 2008 crisis are household names right now. We all know who they are. So Lee, this has been an amazing time. I personally learned a lot and I'm super happy about what I learned because I, you know, definitely taking care of myself physically is one big thing for me, battling anxiety, having resilience. And I learned something new from you that it's all about taking care of the people and realizing that winter is going to come. Now I'm wondering, and I'm sure our listeners would want to know this as well, where else can they find you? Yeah, so I'm on www.essentialize.co.uk and leechambers.org. And on those websites, you'll find my blogs, my socials, and yep, get in contact if you're looking for entrepreneurial coaching or well-being in your workplace for your employees and for your leaders. All right, we're going to have those links on the show notes go to leadershipstack.com. Lee Chambers episodes are going to be there. We are going to have this on YouTube, on Spotify, and on all the other platforms where the podcast is syndicated. But we're going to have the links only on YouTube's description section and the website's show notes. So if you want to find out more about Lee, he is also on Instagram. So if you want to follow him there, hit on leadershipstack.com, go to the show notes, click the links, do yourself a favor, follow this guy, learn from him, and just optimize your life. So Lee, thank you so much. We are better for listening to you, and we have learned so much from you. It's been a privilege, Sean.